Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Julie from Story A Day here in this little quiet lull at the end of the year. I don't know if it's a quiet lull for you. It's a quiet lull for me and I really love it. I love this moment of waiting for the new year to start. We're winding down in our house from Christmas celebrations. We don't have too much going on. And there's a sense of possibility building as the new year approaches and everyone's talking about that fresh start feeling. I have a friend who is a dog trainer and one of the things she does with her dogs is this agility training, which I didn't even know was a thing until a couple of years ago. But it's when you take your dog out and you run them over obstacles, but it's not just an obstacle course. There's a whole science to it. There's world championships in this thing. And I was watching a video that she shared this week of how she is going back to fundamentals, even as an expert dog trainer, even as somebody who's been doing agility training with her own dogs for years and years, multiple times a week. Her own trainer, because she of course has a trainer, as well as being a trainer, because she appreciates how difficult it is to do things alone. She was training not with her dog, but she was holding a pole against her hips and moving through the course practicing moving her body so that she can communicate silently with her dog. And the point of the pole was so that she would learn to position her body in such a way that the bottom half of her body, so where the pole was alerting her to which way the bottom half of her body was moving and pointing. So that is communicating one thing to the dog And the top half of her body, her face, is communicating the other. And I believe I have this right. The the way she turned, that is consistently what's the future movement for the dog. And the way she's looking is what the dog's focusing on right now. And I thought that was a really interesting metaphor, analogy for us. Where are you turned? What are you turning towards? There are things you have to be looking at right now to deal with the present. But what are you turning towards as this new year approaches? If you're the kind of person who has great big ambitions and puts lots of things on your to-do list or your goals list or you you'd get really excited about the fresh start and then find yourself getting quickly frustrated because of course we don't we can't do everything straight away and we don't live up to things and we forget about some of the things that we put on those to-do lists. This might be a good analogy for you to use instead of a to-do list or a goal list as you're thinking about the next year or more likely the next three months. I think a year is a really hard time to, a hard length of time to plan for realistically. But if you think about the next 90 days, there's a sufficient amount of urgency in there that you might get some stuff done. But this idea of turning towards things rather than just having a list of goals. I think is really helpful because there's something I have seen over the years as I have taken my writing more seriously, as I have helped others to take their writing more seriously, as I've formed things like the iWriter course and the Story A Week newsletter, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and the Superstars group. The benefit of all of these things that I've been putting out into the world for you is that they just keep turning you back towards your writing over and over again. I don't tell you how to write. I don't tell you which skills you need to pursue. I don't tell you there's one way, one true holy way to write, because I really honestly don't believe that's true. I believe you find your way, but you find your way by not just coming at it in bursts when you remember. So I send you newsletters and I send you downloads, spreadsheets to fill in. I I sent out a, a word tracker a couple of weeks ago, which you can download. There are worksheets and all kinds of workbooks that I've put out over the years, which intensely focus you on your writing for a moment. But it's very easy to put those things away and forget about them. I do it. You probably do it. My intentions are great, but sticking with it is much harder. And that's why over the years, I realized that we needed something to keep turning us back towards our writing. And that's why I formed the Superstars group in 2018. And it's what I've seen happening inside that group is that the more people show up for a writing sprint or a monthly meeting or a workshop, and they do it month after month, 
they just make more progress. They, they are writers. They think about writing more, they talk about writing more, and that inevitably leads to doing writing more when you're surrounded by other people who are doing the thing. So if you're having trouble setting goals for this year, maybe don't set any outcome goals. Maybe what you want to be thinking about is my friend, the, the dog trainer, turning her body to where, towards the direction she wants the dog to go next. Like, turn yourself in the direction you want your brain to go next. Keep turning back to places and activities and groups where people are actually getting writing done and supporting each other. There are lots of places online to find places where people are writing and it's very competitive and it's very, it stokes all of those jealousies that we are uh, and envy that we are subject to. Find something that's not that. I'm going to gently suggest that the Superstars group might be right for you and it is open for registration at the moment. So if you come to storyaday.org forward slash superstars, you can find out more information about that. And if you need to know more, just contact me. You can email me. You can leave a comment on the site. Let me know you're interested. And if you really want to, we can get on a call and talk about it and see if it's right for you. It's not right for everyone. It might be right for you. I promised last week that I would tell you more successes that I've heard from other writers this year. And, and I talked through last week some of the successes that people had in terms of publishing. And that was that always super exciting. As someone put in the comments, I never get sick of seeing my name in print, which is something I absolutely agree with. I was first published in my local newspaper when I was about, oh, what was I, like 17? I was working at the local newspaper and seeing my name at the top of an article was thrilling. And it remains as thrilling to this day whenever I get something out there that's published, you know, publish my own stuff, that's fine. Somebody else publishes you. There's something really nice about that and seeing your name there with other writers. Other things that people celebrated in our group this year were things like, I got my first rejection. They got their first rejection on a particular piece or they got their first rejection ever. And this is something that it sounds ridiculous to celebrate, but it is absolutely a good thing because it shows that you're putting your work out there. I will put my hand up and confess it's been a long time since I have sent anything out fiction-wise to be judged and selected and published. I just, that's just, sending things out has not been my focus over the past few years. So I am absolutely applauding everybody who does because there's no way I'm getting my fiction published right now. I'm just, it's, if I don't send it out, nobody knows it exists. It's not going to be published then, but the only, I'm not sending it out because I'm scared of rejection. That's, I've, I'm beyond that point. I know that rejection is a necessary part of the process. I understand why it happens. It's not about fear for me. It's just not where I'm focused at the moment. But I also understand the consequence of that choice is that my fiction is not getting out there into the world and it's not getting read. So I absolutely applaud people who are sending their stuff out and being courageous enough to come and say, I got my first rejection or this piece got rejected, this piece got close to being accepted and still got rejected and that really stings because it gives everyone else in your orbit the courage to do the same thing. I also got somebody celebrated just writing a single story for Story A Day May. It doesn't make a lot of sense, they said, and it's very rough, but it felt awesome to participate, even if it just ends up being this one time, because this is the first story I've finished in a long time. Do not underestimate the joy, the power of finishing something in whatever form it, it ends up. Making something good is great. Making something finished is the only way to get to the point where you can make something good. And if you're consistently not finishing things, I am going to encourage you, invite you, to make that a priority for this coming year. Finish some stuff. It is the only way you learn how a story gets told. We never really know what a story is or wants to be or what the real shape of a story is until we get to the end. So do not stop in the middle of stories unless you decide that you absolutely don't want to finish this one. You're never going to come back to it. You're just going to let it go. It was a learning experience. That's fine. But if there's a story, that you haven't finished, I'm going to encourage you to make a plan to finish it. 
because it is powerful, not just in terms of the craft, but there's actual psychological benefits to closing that loop on a piece that's out there. Finishing it in some form or other makes you feel like you can do this and you, it, it's an accomplishment. And then you've got something that you can work with. And on the notes of not finishing, somebody shared that they were happy writing. This was back during the Story A Day May 2023 challenge. They shared a comment saying, even though I didn't finish what I started writing for yesterday's prompt, what I did write was really fun and I'm really happy I took the plunge, started the challenge and can't wait to keep going. Sometimes we have to build up the muscles. We are not always going to finish everything, especially during the challenge. The aim of finishing and actually finishing probably more often than not is powerful, but also stopping and smelling the roses, feeling the fun, feeling the joy of just being writing again. When you were a kid and you could just run forever, I'm assuming you could run. If you could run, or maybe you could wheel on your bike or in your chair or whatever your Whatever that sense of motion that you had as a child, something that just gave you joy, maybe you were swinging on a swing. If you go back and, and experience that again for a moment, there's a giddiness. I climbed on a swing in a playground with my kids when they were little and I was like, oh my goodness, because I hadn't been on a swing since I was a kid. And just that freedom of flying through the air, that joy of something that, that you really love, you can get that from your writing if you look for it. It takes work because we're grown-ups and because we have expectations and because we have ambitions and we want to get things finished and published and blah, 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 blah. But looking for the joy in the writing is something that's absolutely worth celebrating. And I'm so glad that that member of our, our group left that comment. And I think I mentioned this one last week, but I wanted to mention it again. My little win is that after opening a manuscript I haven't looked at in over a year, I found I really liked what I wrote. That's one of my favourite triumphs from the year because it is easy to be super critical of what we write and to leave something for long enough that you don't exactly remember it and be like, oh, actually, I really like that. I think we have that experience more often than not. And I'm really glad that superstar had the courage to actually admit it because we are not encouraged to blow our own trumpets. And I think we should because it's, it's, uh, it's unattractive and frustrating when you're someone who's good at something and they refuse to admit it. Isn't that frustrating? What if you were that someone, right? What if you are frustrating everyone around you by not admitting how good you are as a writer? You're good. You love to write. You have a facility for words. People enjoy your writing. Let's stop pretending that's not true this year. How about that for a New Year's goal? I'm going to stop pretending that I'm a terrible writer and my writing sucks and all of that stuff that we say. Let's net, let's just take a moment together here and vow no false modesty, no putting ourselves down, no nasty voices in our heads about ourselves. Don't let yourself talk that way about yourself. You wouldn't let anyone talk about your best friend that way. Don't let yourself badmouth yourself. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not arrogant to embrace your talents. We are not supposed to be overly falsely modest, doesn't get us anywhere, doesn't do anyone any favours. There are readers out there who want your stories. There are readers out there who like your writing, no matter whether there are four of them or four million. Don't run yourself down, okay? That's me being strict. That's what we're going to do this year. We're going to be nice to ourselves. Those are a few of the things that we were celebrating in the Story A Day Superstars group this year. I am celebrating... I'm going to celebrate the last couple of years. I've focused quite a lot in the last couple of years. I have been doing my own writing as well, but I've been focusing on building a bunch of ways that I can support you as writers. And sometimes I forget to tell you what they all are. So I'm going to tell you about some of them right now. And the very simplest, easiest thing that you can do is download the Story A Day short story framework, use it to brainstorm a story, and write a story. You could write it today, you could write it this week. The next easiest thing you can do is take my three-day challenge. That is, and I'll link to all of these things in the show notes, the three-day challenge is a little mini course where, and you don't have to do it on over three consecutive days, you don't even have to do it over three days, you can take as long as you like, but it's structured as a three-day challenge to give you a little bit of uh, oomph. You can sign up for it and I will send you 
three lessons about short story writing. Day one kind of focuses on the opening, but I'm going to encourage you to write a full story, just focusing on that opening, but writing the story. Day two focuses on the middle, and day three focuses on, guess, the end. Yes. So there's lessons on how to write, and it's specifically aimed at short story writing, not novels, because I don't think there's enough out there for us short story writers. Um, I think in MFA programs, they focus on short stories, but I don't think there's an awful, there's not really enough out here for us short story writers. So that's why I built that program. That's an inexpensive mini course that you can take that will, I'll send you emails every day for three days. There are some bonuses in there as well, some bonus secret content that if you go right through all of the content, you get, you unlock some secret content. So that's fun. The next thing I'm going to let you know about that I built last year, which I'm, I'm really proud of, and I haven't talked about it much, is the Story A Week newsletter. I put together 52 weeks of short story writing prompts, but not just writing prompts. They sort of build on each other. So we start with some easy ways to get into short story writing, very much the like how I do it in the challenge in May, except this way you're only getting a writing prompt every week. So you get a writing prompt, but you also get a little letter from me. And it talks about either how to work with the prompt or increasingly as the year went on, I talked about, I told stories within the introductory letter and demonstrated some of the storytelling techniques that we were, we, we were using in our stories. And also they were aimed at being inspirational to get you writing. So that is something that you can sign up for. A very much light newsletter that people, people use a lot of pro platforms like Substack and Patreon and things like that to launch their newsletters. I have always sidestepped that because you never know who's running those platforms and then they can go out of business or they can decide that they like Nazis or whatever it is. So I've always just published everything myself. So you can find that by going directly to storyaday.org forward slash story a week. And you can sign up either for weekly, um, sorry, I, and you can sign up either for a monthly subscription which allows you to decide month to month if you want to keep going. It'll keep renewing until you stop for the full year. Or you can sign up a quarter at a time. Or you could decide to go all in and sign up for 52 letters from me for the coming year, each of which will contain inspiration, encouragement, and a writing prompt aimed at short story writers, each of which builds on each other over the year. So we'll start at the beginning with just getting to the desk. We move into looking at different aspects of the craft and then we go from there, different forms of short story and then putting it all together towards the end. So there's that. You can find that if, if you, if that sounds like the right kind of pace for you, if you would like to stay focused and turn yourself towards your writing at least once a week this year, I would really encourage you to take a look at the Story A Week newsletter. It's, it starts whenever you sign up and it finishes 52 weeks later. And you get to go through it at your own pace. You, can, you don't have to write a story every week. You don't have to submit it anywhere. You just, you can archive them and look at them later. Or you can just open them every week and be reminded that you're a writer. And maybe you could work on this week. And if you decide you don't want to work on this week, maybe there's something else that sparks your, your interest in. Maybe it reminds you about a chapter for your novel you want to work on. So the Story Week newsletter is at storyaday.org forward slash story a week. Another thing which is coming up is the iWriter course. It's a six module workshop. It's quite intense. It dives deeply into storytelling techniques. There's lessons every week about getting to your desk and mindset. And then there's also a craft based lesson every week. And there's a couple of writing prompts in there. You can decide if you want to do one or both. But every week, a new module of that will release over six weeks. There is a DIY version of that that you can access at any time. Again, links are in the show notes, but I will be running a live version of that starting in later January. And I like to start stuff at the beginning of January because I think we can put expectations on ourselves that are a little too high. I'm going to start that later in January. And before that, I will be running a five day challenge in mid January. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That's a terrible expression. I don't like that one. Um, keep an eye out in your inbox for that. Starting around the 15th of January, I'm going to be doing a five-day challenge, completely free, 
to get you warmed up and to help you stick to whatever resolutions you set for the coming year, whatever goals you set for the coming year. So watch your inbox for that one. But the iWriter course is available now as a DIY version. And again, as I, as I say, I'll be doing a live cohort of it starting at late January, where you'll be able to come to some live meetings and chat about what's going on in the course and meet some other writers and things like that. Keep an eye out for that. And of course, the two things which I've talked to you about recently in emails, the Story Day Superstars group is open for registration right now. So if you are looking for a place where you can show up, either live on Zoom meetings or in our Slack workspace, come to Hangouts once a month, come to writing sprints throughout the month if you want to, come to workshops that I put on. There's the critique week that I put on three times a year as well. It's a home for you as a writer online. A lot of people in the Superstars group go off and do other courses and are members of other groups, but they keep they, they come back to Story A Day Superstars as their home because it is so welcoming. And it's you show up for any of the events or you lurk in the Slack workspace or you just read my newsletter once a month and watch replays of, of things. But it's just a very welcoming, inclusive, supportive place. I say that the only thing I will not tolerate is intolerance, which amuses me. But it is the, one of the most welcoming and positive and upbeat places that you can find for writers. And it's intentionally. I have made it. And uh, it's not Pollyanna-ish. People get to complain and, and people get to commiserate. And being in Superstars doesn't inoculate you from bad stuff happening. But it does give you a place to go when the bad comes along with the good, where you can get some uh, commiseration and support and perspective on what you're doing. And the other thing that I talked to you recently about is the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I offer. I'm just opening up some slots for that for the new year. And this is for people who are, you don't have to be at any particular stage in your writing, except that you're frustrated with your progress. Maybe not even frustrated, maybe you're excited by your progress. And you know enough about yourself that you understand that trying to do it yourself is going to be slower. And having somebody to listen and hear what you're trying to do, help you figure out priorities and keep you on track, remind you of what you said you were going to do. There's an accountability level to it, but there's also a strategizing part of it. I've been in this writing world for a very long time. I know about stuff to do with the publishing side of it as well as the creativity side of it. And if you're looking for someone to help you carve a path, but you find that being in a group isn't pushing you enough, because in a group there are lots of places to hide. That's why I've decided to offer this coaching program on a one to one basis. We generally will be spending six months together pushing you towards the things that you want to be doing. If that is something that sounds appealing, then come and check that out at storyaday.org, writing coaching with Julie. Again, all the links for this will be in the show notes. So there's everything here for you from the free short story framework, which just lets you brainstorm and start a story today, to the three-day challenge, which gets you to your desk and pr helps you prove you can write to something like the Story a Week newsletter, which is going to keep turning you towards your writing every day of the year, and which you can sign up for at storyaday.org forward slash story a week. Or there's the iWriter course, which is a bit more intensive, but it's also a bit more structured. It will take you through a curriculum over six modules with motivational and mindset stuff, as well as craft-based lessons like creating compelling characters and writing flash fiction and it has short story writing prompts in it and we'll, you can do that DIY or we'll have that live cohort coming up in January. Then there's the Story A Day Superstars group which is a more interactive way to be with your writing and with other writers and get that support and even for introverts we often find that it's surprising how motivating a group can be. There you go. It, it actually is. And then if you know that you are, even if you love being in superstars, you may still need a little extra one-to-one -one attention. So there's that coaching option for you there as well. So tons of support here at Story A Day. And then, of course, 
in May, we will have our 15th story a day May coming up, which is all just crazy do-it-yourself, frantic writing to joyfully discover what you can do in the company of others. Lots going on here. I hope that you have a brilliant Hogmanay, a happy New Year celebration, and a gentle first couple of weeks of the new year. I will be back here in your ears next week. If any of those supports and programs that I talked about interest you, go into the show notes. If you're on your phone and you're not driving, pull up your podcast app, pick, click on the little information thing, look at the show notes, click on any of those links. And if you need anything, you know where to find me with questions. Happy end of 2023. Happy start of 2024 when it comes. And most of all, keep writing. Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.